Easter services at Shiloh Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., a church founded by freed slaves. And a wonderful day to spend Easter Sunday. The it weather was, absolutely oh, fantastic. It was beautiful today. I wish we could get more of that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kind of weather we have coming over the next three or four days, if it were snow and it's not, good. Good. <laughs> we'd be talking about snow in feet oh, coming our goodness. way. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's a lot of rain. That you're much about moisture then. Yeah. heading our way. Let's show you what's happening outside. Nothing really much going out uh, outside your windows now. It's 50 degrees out, and with the cloudy sky, our temperature temperatures are only going to drop a few more degrees, so it will be a mild night and a mild morning back to school, back to work tomorrow. Let's show you the radar picture. We mentioned a stationary front earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, and what this is is cold air and warm air just battling it out, neither deciding to win it out, and it's slowly starting to push northward. You can see it's a boundary where all the showers and storms have lined up here, and as it moves north, yeah, it carries that moisture with it. Not only only this moisture, but moisture is feeding in from the Gulf of Mexico into this and trailing behind it. Look at these showers and storms that are coming out of the Rocky Mountains. So it's funneling in from every direction. And the big steering mechanism, as always, is the jet stream. For days and days, it has been settled down to our south. But over the next couple of days, it's going to take a buckle and start to deliver more of this moisture up to the north, right into southeast Michigan. We're talking two to three inches inches of rain over the next three or four days total. That's a lot. Don't need to water if you've planted any sod or seed. That's for sure. Let's time it out for you here on the weather computer. And you can see tomorrow morning through noontime, we have some very light rain showers that we'll have to deal with. But through the afternoon, skies will begin to clear out. As we push through tomorrow night, the bouts of heavier rain come pushing through. And then on Tuesday, really warming things up. And as the atmosphere heats up, we've got storms to contend with that could be strong to severe with uh, a lot of lightning, heavy downpours, and more of that wind and hail. Nothing has been decided as far as tornadic discussion or anything, but we'll certainly be on top of it. High temperatures because of the rain early will keep us below 60 on your Monday. Tuesday, yeah, stormy, breezy, 72 degrees on and off through the next three or four days here. We're not looking at all day soakers at all here. Wednesday, we're stormy, 66, and Thursday, it starts to taper off uh, with cool 53 degrees. We want you to know that Chuck will be at the ABC Warehouse in Canton on Wednesday afternoon as part of our Severe Weather Radio Special. We'll have reports going on on how to use these Severe Weather Radios, how to get one. They are great. They alert you, obviously, during severe weather. Yeah. Uh, money well uh, worth it. Oh, so important. And I believe Chuck will also be there, there with the experts to tell people how to set them up. And they're very useful in that you can have them specifically into your neighborhood mm -hmm. practically. They wow. won't alert for everything crazy going on around the state. So Beautiful. tune in Wednesday night for that. All right, Wednesday in Canton. Go see Chuck. Sounds good. Next Friday, millions of Americans will wake up early to witness the wedding of the century. Prince William and Kate Middleton will tie the knot this Friday at Westminster Abbey. The guest list includes Elton John, David Beckham, and many other royals, including some from countries like Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which is raising some eyebrows because of those countries' human rights records. Former British Prime Ministers Tony Blair and Gordon Brown are not on that list. The Today Show will have expanded live coverage of the ceremony starting at 4 a.m. Friday morning. And the local four night cam, that's K-N-I-G-H-T cam, <laughs> will also be in London for the royal wedding. I believe Tim Pamplin will also visit his mom while he's home, so he's going to have a good time <laughs> and bring us some great information. I can't wait. You certainly don't want to miss it. Up next, it's another big night for a local chef hoping to win big on an NBC show. Coming up in a matter of minutes on Sports Final Edition, the Tigers go for the sweep of the White Sox with Max Scherzer on the hill. The Red Wings take time off and still don't know who they will play in the next round. But former Red Wing Darren McCarty will be in studio to tell us how far they will go in the playoffs. The teams still playing give us high-flying highlights. Could the Celtics and Heat both sweep their respective series today? What does Lions general manager Martin Mayhew have to say about this week's NFL draft? Hear that and more next on the show. 
Jamon Woods, a chef and hopeful restaurateur from right here in Detroit, has advanced again on America's next great restaurant. He is doing great. Tonight's challenge put the four finalists in Las Vegas. Jamon kept his soul food light and healthy. His ribs do rave reviews. He got the highest marks from the customers and the four celebrity judges. And nothing bad to say. If Jamon wins next week's final challenge, he will win his dream of a national chain of restaurants. We're rooting for you, Jamon. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching Local 4 News at 11. Have yourself a great night. Sports Final Edition is next. You're watching Local 4, home of ClickOnDetroit.com. WTIV Local 4 News Morning starts now. Saving schools in the state's largest district. Today, seven Detroit public schools make a last-ditch effort to keep their classrooms open. And a warning for anyone selling their stuff online on websites like Craigslist. We're going to show you how crooks are changing their game plan and why it could make you a target. The pain at the pump getting worse over the weekend, but all new overnight why some are saying we've reached the peak and some relief may not be too far away. Andrew? Thank you, Guy. That sounds like some good news. Well, we had sunshine yesterday for Easter, but clouds have moved back then, and we've got rain on 4 Live Radar. I'll talk about your forecast in a few minutes. Good morning. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, welcome back to Monday. It is 6 a.m. we got temperatures in the mid-40s out there right mm -hmm. now. Good morning to you. I'm Rhonda Walker. Thank you so much for starting off your Monday with Local 4. And I'm Guy Gordon. We'll check weather and traffic, as always, on the 4s at 6.04. But first, this morning, an ailing mother is fighting to stay healthy and fighting to stay out of jail. Now, she has a serious medical condition, and while her health is a big concern, a local judge is also very concerned about why her kids have missed so much school. Paula Tutman is following this story for us live this morning. Paula, and today's hearing will put everything on the table. Yeah, it really will because it's an evidentiary hearing. Basically what the judge wants is documentation that this woman has indeed been ill. The bottom line is her children are chronically tardy, uh, chronically missing school, and the judge wants answers. Davis Clinton Township mother will be in court, but at least she won't be brought in in shackles. That's because Olivia Ahorn Foote got a last minute reprieve. The mother of five was ordered to spend Easter weekend in jail because her children are chronically truant or tardy from school. But she says she is terminally ill and is doing the best she can. They've been through enough and this is going to kill them. And it's killing me because I feel guilty. I feel guilty for being sick. We've had a really hard spell we had. Um, I've been in the hospital constantly. A truancy officer has been tracking the children's poor attendance for many years. It led to a misdemeanor charge against Olivia last year. She pled guilty before Judge Linda Davis, who says she's never been presented with any documentation that the mother is ill. When this case was first brought up, the youngest child, who was a third grader at the time, had had 227 days that had been affected by attendance issues. Okay, that's over a year and a half of school. Things. Nobody loves, wants to send a mother to jail. I just want her to send her children to school. Yeah, you can certainly understand the court's concern with the children not making it to school again. Today's hearing at 8.30 this morning should put all the cards on the table. The judge is asking for documentation, and certainly, certainly the court will also find some ways to possibly help this mother in getting her kids to school once they understand what's really going on here. We'll definitely keep you posted. Reporting live, Paula Tutman, Local 4. All right, Paula, thank you. What do you think? This brings us to our Tim Horton's Always Fresh text poll for the Day. This is our question to you. Do you think that the mother's ailment is an acceptable excuse for her children's poor attendance? We want to know what you think about this, so send us a text message to 94648. In the body of the text message, type vote A for yes or vote B for no, and we'll update those results towards the end of our newscast. Pastor Terry Jones' visit to Dearborn was controversial, and it was also costly, we're finding out. And if he returns to Dearborn, as he says he will this Friday, is planned. Just how much is the increased security and legal representation costing the city of Wayne and the city and also Wayne County? Well, they got out the calculator. Here are the added costs. $31,000 for extra police protection. A helicopter to watch things from the air. That charge, $6,000. A command post cost $750. So the total spent on Pastor Jones' visit was over $46,000.
at this point you want to make sure that nothing happens because a lot of the world's watching unfortunately because of his previous action of uh, burning the Koran. So I think uh, it's it's important to say we're standing by in the community. It was great to see the religious and community leaders get together in the past. That's $46,000 for a protest that didn't happen. It's been rescheduled for this Friday and the city and county will likely need to spend money again to secure that area. Two people are in the hospital this morning being treated for serious injuries after being in a rollover accident and alcohol was involved. Uh, the De De in Detroit at the busy intersection of Orange Lawn and Evergreen, a man traveling at a high rate of speed blew right through a stop sign and caused a serious accident. Police arrived at the scene and arrested the man. His sobriety test revealed that he had a blood alcohol level of 0.297. That is approximately four times the legal limit. Charges are pending. A falling object sends a car through a fence and sends a driver on the run. The accident happened along Woodward Avenue in Detroit. Witnesses tell Local 4 that a car was driving behind a truck hauling materials when something fell out of the back of that truck. The car swerved to avoid the object, then drove onto a sidewalk, hit several parked cars, and then crashed through a fence. And that's when the driver got out of the car and fled the scene. Police are now looking for that driver. Well, we had a wonderful Easter yes, weekend. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And things are going to be changing for this week. Not as warm, for one. That's right. Not as sunny is the main thing, especially for today and the next few days. Temperatures right now on the chilly side, as Rhonda mentioned. Sterling Heights checking in at 45 degrees, 45 also in Imlay City. Rain is appearing here on 4 Live Radar down toward the Toledo area, but also affecting Monroe County. And more showers to our south. Those are going to move in for this afternoon. So don't forget the umbrellas and the rain gear before before you head out. 52 degrees at lunchtime, 57 for a high today, but this afternoon's commute will have some widespread showers, maybe even a thunderstorm or two. The rest of the week's forecast straight ahead. Now traffic on the fours and Ashley Barrison. Good morning, Ashley. How's the traffic looking? The traffic looks good, Andrew. Prepare to use your wipers later, but right now we're looking at dry road conditions and an accident free morning. Here's a live look I 75 at Bagley right by the pedestrian bridge and you can see traffic getting by smoothly in both directions. However, stay with us at 614 because I'm going to tell you where the orange barrels will be out on Joy Road and we're also going to take a closer look at your travel time along northbound I-275. Back to you. General Motors is poised to overtake Toyota to become the world's top automaker once again. And mortgage rates slide again. Here's Bloomberg's Jane King standing by the New York Stock Exchange. Happy Monday, Jane. Good morning. Hi, Conrad. Happy Monday to you, too. And that's right, General Motors may reclaim the top spot as the world's largest automaker. Now, Toyota has suffered over the past year or so from recalls and also, of course, the Japanese earthquake. Uh, analysts say if GM sales projections are on track, it will become the world's largest automaker this year, a position it held from 1932 to 2008. Now, Ford's growth these days coming from fuel efficient vehicles. So we're going to hear more about that when the company reports its quarterly results tomorrow. But rising gas prices are helping drive sales for those fuel efficient models. Still, there are some fears among Wall Street analysts that Ford's sales of gas guzzlers are slowing and the effects of the Japanese earthquake uh, also having an impact on the company. Now, stocks this morning, uh, we're looking a little bit higher for the start of things here. When we last traded on Thursday, uh, stocks were quiet but higher on solid company earnings. Now, mortgage rates Rates are still near historic lows. A 30-year fixed-rate home loan fell last week for the first time in five weeks to 4.8 percent. What is driving this? Well, mortgage experts say all the cash buyers are making up a larger and growing portion of the home buying market these days. Live at the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Jane King, Bloomberg News, reporting for Local 4. Guy and Rhonda, back to you. Thank you, Jane. Time now is 6.06. A popular East Point restaurant is damaged and damaged beyond recognition after a devastating fire. And this is a story you saw breaking on Local 4. Flames gutting legendary. Coney Island, a nine mile just south of Kelly. And you're looking now uh, in a moment here at viewer video of that fire. It took nearly five hours for firefighters to put the blaze out. No one was inside that restaurant at the time, thank goodness. But it could be days before investigators can get back inside to determine the cause of the fire. The show will go on in Macomb County. The Stars and Stripes Festival has found a sponsor to pay for its summer fireworks show. Thanks to the Wayne and Joan Weber Foundation, fireworks will paint the sky on July 1st and they'll still be free to the public. The couple stepped up after the Community Central Bank was forced to stop its annual donation due to financial troubles. Money is still needed, however, to help pay for other parts of the festival. So if you can help out, I'm sure Macomb County would appreciate it. 
all new at 615, Booming Business. Yes, we're going to introduce you to a 31-year-old business phenom. She's going to share her strategy for success and how you can make it on your own if you have business plans as well. We're looking forward to talking with her. But first, a scare in the air where a man tries to hijack a plane and how he was brought down. This story is next as Local 4 News Morning continues. Stay with us. Welcome back. A scare in the air when a passenger reportedly tries to hijack a flight and attacks a flight attendant. Yeah, this happened on a flight from Paris to Rome. According to Alitalia Airlines, the agitated passenger pulled a nail clipper on the flight attendant and demanded that the plane be diverted to Tripoli, Libya. And that's when other flight attendants subdued the man. As planned, the flight landed safely in Rome and police took the man into custody for questioning. The flight attendants were not harmed. For more than a half, a week and a half, I should say, hundreds of volunteers in Parsons, Tennessee, have been searching areas around a missing woman's home, trying to find anything that would help find her. Officials in Parsons said on Sunday that that would be the end of the ground search for Holly Bobo. But something that was found has delayed that decision and will have searchers back out again. Further details, though, have not been released. Game over. PlayStation is experiencing a major outage and it's been having problems for days. Yes, this is uh, this morning. Our partners at Slate are telling us that this is one of the hottest topics that are trending on Twitter and search engines. The PlayStation Network is down, halting nearly 70 million people from gaming online. The timing couldn't be worse as the outage coincides with the release of popular titles such as Mortal Kombat, SOCOM 4, and the beta release of Infamous 2. Speaking of Infamous, the hacker group Anonymous has been linked to the outage after they paralyzed the PlayStation Network earlier this month, but they claim it's not them this time. The PlayStation outage comes just days after Amazon's cloud service paralyzed popular websites like Foursquare, Hootsuite, and Reddit. And you can see other stories that are hot topics right now. Just look for the Trending News Channel. That's the section under the News tab at ClickOnDetroit.com. The Tigers looked amazing over the weekend. The Tigers pitchers were in a groove at Comerica Park, silencing the White Sox for 20 consecutive innings. We knew they had it in them, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tigers starting pitcher Max Scherzer went eight scoreless innings. He struck out seven, gave up only four hits. Brandon Inge supplied an RBI double in the sixth inning that scored Alex Avila. The Tigers went on to sweep the White Sox. A score of three to nothing. Great performance over the weekend by Brad Penny as well, who's been struggling. Great to see him get back on. Game. Red Wing sweep, now the Tigers. I know. Let's <laughs> keep it going. Oh, love it. Well, if we could just get a sweep of like a whole week of great weather all <laughs> strung know. together. It's been so oh, long. Her, I know. Oh, oh, I tried to distract you with all the <laughs> It stuff. always comes back to the weather. <laughs> I know. It certainly does. Well, we do have rain in the forecast, unfortunately. Uh, we have showers that are just out to our south, but we got a chance of more widespread showers this afternoon. Don't forget those umbrellas before heading out. Kids, looks like you might have to play plan for some indoor recess with temperatures that will be in the 50s later on. Right now we're looking at temps in the 40s. Nice looking shot outside our weather window brought to you by 1-800 Hansons looking at Comerica Park. Seattle's in here tomorrow night. Looks, it's, looks like it's going to be a wet one for tomorrow in the next few days. But first, 50 degrees at the airport and in your neighborhood. Temperatures starting off around 50 or a bit less. On 4 Live Radar, we can look inside the clouds. We've got some rain developing here just down to our south. Lambertville over to Monroe, also around Luna here up and down 75 just down river, but it's got reinforcements. You can see not much just to the south of it, so these would be some scattered sprinkles this morning. But here are those more widespread showers. This front that you see right here, it's going to wave around, and as it undulates back and forth when it gets closer to us, that's when we'll see a better chance of showers with some rising temperatures. So that's why it's going to be wet later on today with those widespread showers and through Thursday that front is going to hang around. So get ready for some soggy and slippery conditions on those rain soaked roadways. Here's a look at what happens over the next few hours. Later this afternoon we'll see 53 degrees at noontime. Clouds stay in place. A better chance of showers after lunchtime. Highs around 57. Now this afternoon's rush hour is going to be wetter than this morning. Overnight tonight, mild but soggy. Temperatures down to only 50 degrees. May see a thunderstorm or two develop around dinner time and then later for tomorrow morning. I'm going to keep showers and thunderstorms in the forecast, I'm afraid, as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday. Tuesday's high, 70 degrees, 65 on Wednesday. 
When does the sunshine come back? Well, just in time for the beginning of the weekend. Friday and Saturday, it will be sunnier with highs around 60 or more. On to Traffic on the Fours and Ashley Barracy. Ashley, hope you have some better news for us. <laughs> well, the good news, Andrew, that I have is we are accident free, but it is orange barrel season. So for those of you that are waking up in Detroit, take note that Joy Road is closed at the Southfield Freeway in both directions, and this starts at 7 o'clock this morning. So pack your patience in that area. In addition, we're going to take a look at I-275 northbound. If you're flying through, this is from M14. Speeds look nice at 61 miles per hour as you approach the 96-696 interchange and your overall commute is right on time at six minutes. Taking a closer look at the I-75 commutes in, uh, commute in Auburn Hills is Mike Lineman in Sky 4 with our LaFontaine traffic report. Mike? Hey, Ashley, watching the M59 I-75 commute here. That's I-75 on top of 59. They have the construction down below. They've got a couple of ramps closed. The westbound M59 to southbound I-75 ramp is off limits. And they shut that ramp down over the weekend for uh, safety concerns as traffic moves through the construction area. No backups quite yet. Still very light traffic volumes out here in Albert Hills. Ashley? Thanks, Mike. Well, let's take a look at a gas price to drive for. The average pump price around Metro Detroit is $3.96 a gallon. However, if you are in Shelby Township today, Murphy USA on 23 mile near Shelby Parkway is selling gas for $3.80 a gallon. And if you see a gas price to drive for, let us know at clickondetroit.com. Guy? All right, thanks, Ashley. Last night at 11, we introduced you to a 31 year old business phenom. Tawny Tu is the founder and owner of a hair salon. Four Pink Pump Boutiques and P2. This is a new location in Royal Oak with some discount prices, and she is looking to expand on this already successful business venture, and she is truly a uniquely American rags to riches story. Her mom was a Vietnamese refugee, just 25 bucks in her pocket when she gave birth to Tawny while en route to the United States, the humblest of beginnings. And joining us in the studio this morning is Tawny Tu. You've been talking about the fact that you, know, you were young, you were inexperienced, uh, you were an ethnic minority. There were a lot of things that people might have looked at and that underestimated you. How did that not defeat you? I think being underestimated is actually a great tool if you know how to use it to your advantage. I think it allows you to kind of get your feet wet and really learn the business while people aren't watching you. It gives you the chance to really take control of the situation while people don't even know that's what you're doing. But how is it that, you know, those are things that anybody, it could, it could get you down, it could wear you down when people don't believe in your dream the way that you do. How did you keep it from getting you down? You have to still believe in yourself. You have to have a sense of what you want and what direction you want to take and you can never let it get you down because it's really ultimately about your your dream your goal and your vision no we've got to point out too the preparation was really important here you prepared yourself uh, by getting on the inside of other people's success stories tell me how you did that I think it's great practice to be able to see other successful business owners and see what they're doing how they get started and it's a great way to get your practice in and prepare yourself and see if this is really what you want to do do. Now, because so many people, and you're an entrepreneur, and so many entrepreneurs are really good at building the business and creating the concept. When it comes to maintaining what they've built, they, sometimes they don't always have the right skill set for that. But you've had good success in keeping all of these ventures going and you keep expanding. What's been the key? The key is to find a team. You have to find a team of individuals who have the same goal and that want to work towards a common goal with you. And I have an amazing team at every single location. And how is it that you put this team together? What was it that you were looking for? Because I, I bet some people are out there saying, boy, that looks like a pretty cool store to work for. It's, it's all trial and error. You have to give someone a chance. Um, when I was an unknown, someone gave me a chance. And I always keep that in mind. And I like to give people chances. If you see something in them, develop it. Well, in the meantime, let's tell them about the locations. I know Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills, Royal Oak, and I'm missing Ann a Arbor. Ann Arbor, yes. and the new store across the street P2 in Royal Oak. is in Royal Oak, yes. And this is a discounted price point. It is. It's 50 and under, so you can get beautiful and look great for under $50. All right. And the doors open this morning? Yes, they are. They open at noon. All right. Tony, thanks so much. Thank and that's so an inspiring much. story. Thanks for sharing it Thank with us. Thank you so much. And forget uh, winning, he's losing a goddess. The harsh way that one of Charlie Sheen's girlfriends broke up with him. But first, in good health, the one thing that pediatricians say may be putting your child's health at risk and why they are calling for the feds to make some important changes. We're back in a moment.
Welcome back. Time now is 622 and good health this morning. New efforts to protect your children from toxic chemicals found in thousands of consumer products. Well, thousands of pediatricians nationwide are joining the campaign to overhaul how the U.S. regulates uh, hazardous substances. They say before chemicals are distributed, testing should consider how they can affect children and pregnant women. Critics argue even when a risk is identified, it's nearly impossible to determine which products.